today on Jimbo Vision, Deepan. All aboard then for some Tamil language refugee drama with Jacques Odiard thriller Deepan, winner of last year's Palme d'Or at Cannes. Deepan is the story of three Sri Lankan refugees, yeah, apologies if you were expecting something about pizza, who pretend to be a family in order to win asylum to the West, and how they then survive in their new life living in a crime ridden housing project deep in the outskirts of Paris. It is an extraordinary story, or perhaps for many, all too ordinary, and it's told almost entirely here in Tamil. Udiyad, who previously gave us A Prophet, Rust and Bone, and the very excellent The Beat That My Heart Skipped, happy here to sit back and observe the trio almost as a fly on the wall, and offering very little indulgence in his story for the traumas the three have lived through, or for their bewilderment at their new circumstances. This essentially a study of three people with their heads down, concentrating on surviving. He gets some remarkable performances from his family. Claudine Vinazi Thambi as the orphan girl, Kaliaswari Srinivasan as the woman now pretending to be wife and mother, and above all, Jesu Thazan Anthony Thazan, himself a former child soldier in Sri Lanka and refugee who plays the titular Deepan. Also keep an eye out for the up and coming French actor Vincent Rottier, who has an enigmatic turn as a local gangster whose return to the projects sparks trouble, and who looks un petit peu like Ed Norton. Now, for over an hour, this is a careful study of refugee life as the family find work picking their way between the dangers of this drug dominated project while their girl enters the local school. But as they settle into their new lives, cracks begin to appear, particularly in Deepan's case, where a violent regression to his soldiering past becomes indeed the centerpiece of the movie's finale. And when this comes, it represents a really bewildering shift in tone for Deepan, a, a Bronson esque rampage indeed, more die hard than Odiard, exciting and stylishly done, but also wildly out of keeping with the slow and steady build-up. Curiously, ODR then follows that with another wrenching gear change, a bizarre coda set in London, which looks like it was filmed by the French Home Office to suggest people come here instead. So, final scores, deep and crisp but uneven, I'll give it a six and a half, a, a bit like Cronenberg, popular in Cannes, but still not quite stellar.